Hey guys, I came back for round two. Um, super excited to be back. Uh, again, my name is Sarah and I live in Northeast Ohio. This is only my second video, so bear with me because I still really don't know what I'm doing. Hopefully things will click in eventually. I really uh, wanted to say thank you because I did not think that anybody more than my one knitting friend would, would watch my video. And uh, I'm really appreciative of the community of knitting and for whoever watched my last video. And if you're watching now, that's amazing. Uh, again, I went into this with, with zero expectations. I am only, I wanted to do it to get, to get my knitting talk out and not bombard my family so much because they're not knitters or crafters and they don't understand <laughs> what, what I'm talking about, uh, when I have issues or when I'm so excited that I finish something and, um, you know, they share in my joy and excitement, but not to the extent that I know other, other crafters, you know, get it. We get it. So with that being said, let's, let's get to it because I have a lot that I want to talk about today. And I just want to get started because um, I'm still really nervous talking to myself um, on a camera and I kind of feel like I'm going to throw up. So maybe if I just chat, that'll go away. Uh, let's do finished objects first because that's like the most exciting. I finished my son's sweater. Um, I did the classic raglan pattern by Jane Richmond. It is finished. It has sleeves and hems and cuffs and a neck band. And it has loose ends. And I'll tell you why. Because whilst I finished this, um, the day after I did my, my first video, I am holding it hostage because now that it's done, I'm terrified that it's not going to fit him. Yeah, it's a real fear. I don't know why, because it is. So I really just need to get over it and give it to him. Um, I kept the ends in case it doesn't fit him and I need to like pull back or rip back, whatever, and redo some things. <clears throat> so I was so excited to finish it and yet he still doesn't have it in his hands because now I'm terrified. That's stupid, I know. And then I did get these really cute, uh, can you see that? little tags. Um, I partially wanted to get a tag so he knew the front from the back, but then also I was like, I made this and I want to put a tag on it. So these are from Mountain Street. Nope. 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 Where are they from? Oh yeah. Mountain Street Arts on Etsy. Of course, I will put everything down below. Um, she has iron-on ones and sew-in ones. I just did the sew-in ones for, for no, no reason. Anyway, so that's my first one. I need to just uh, balls up and give it to him because I made it for him. <laughs> uh, next one that I finished is my European road trip shawl. And this was my f super fun, almost finished rainbow shawl that is very long. Do, 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 do. Oh, okay. <sighs> I was super excited to finish this. Um, I wore it to work with just like a little dress and um, it was a re really hot day. Um, and this is not a lightweight situation. Um, so I did get made fun of a little bit, but I was really proud of it and excited to wear it. So I just wore it, you know, wrapped around. Um, I did realize when I had it on though, I had to knot it, which I've never really worn a shawl before. So I, I didn't know what I was getting into, but I had to knot it so that it wouldn't, uh, cause it kept like, you know, coming looser. Um, and then the knot created this like, like ugh, right here where it was. So I need to get, I think a shawl clip or, or figure out how to fake a shawl clip or something um, to help with that. But we're getting into spring, so I'm not going to be wearing this, um, really, uh, 
anytime. So I have a moment to figure that out. But I always knew people had shawl clips. I saw people wear them, put them on in their videos and things. And I was like, meh, but I, I get it now. Um, so yes. And then last but not least is my crocheted floor basket, I guess you could call it. It, it did not turn out as, um, as stiff as I had hoped. So I'm probably going to spray it with like starch. But just as a reminder, I was using this for my row one subscription to just throw in here. And then I'm going to make the, uh, a DK weight jelly roll blank. I think DK, maybe fingering. No, um, I'm going to make a jelly roll blanket. Weight is to be determined. So I just had to, I used two, um, yarns that I had in my stash. It's like a super bulky and an Aran weight and just double crochet, single crochet all the way around and around and around. Um, until it, until I felt like it was big enough. It's probably about 12 inches. Um, but I left, I don't know. I left the stitch marker in because that's where I was my first video. And then, uh, I finished it. So yeah, I'm super excited about that. Super excited to throw my yarn row one in here and get it out because I like it and I think it's pretty and uh and I made it right so that's exciting so that was like the highest of highs had such a great week and a half or whatever finishing projects getting it done um the only other thing that I had been working on was my weekender sweater weekender sweater yeah by Andrea Mowry <sighs> and I'm frogging it. I spent so much time Easter weekend knitting on it and just with just it being the holiday we just for some reason had like a lot of downtime and it was just so nice and I was just like boop 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 knitting away on my weekender making myself a garment. I tried it on. I nope. Mm -mm. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Nothing to do with the pattern. All, all me issues. Obviously, it has nothing to do with the pattern. A million people make it. Um, but dang, I, I was so, I cried. I cried because I was so upset that I disliked it so much. And I don't think that there, I know that there is no way to fix it. And if there is a way to fix it, I know that I do not have the patience to fix it. So therefore, <sighs> it's being ripped out. And I, I tried it on. It had to have been last week. Was so upset. Literally, I, I did cry about it because um, it was just so much time. And I know you, I know you understand that. I threw it in the corner of my craft room. I didn't even want to look at it. I couldn't even deal with it. Maybe that's dramatic, but that's me. So I'm going to show it to you. I don't know why, because it's coming out. I have the whole body done and half of a sleeve. And that's, that's her. That's her. Also, do you guys have barber cords? Because you should. Um, I, I'm always hesitant when I buy crafting accessories because I, I don't know if that's a lie. I'm not hesitant. I am now because I'm trying to be more cautious of the things that come into this chaotic room. Um, but these barber cords are super awesome. And, um, the grocery girls knit podcast talked me into them um these are from knitting cords uh, uh shop on etsy anyway back to the horrendous sweater so a lot of things with this one i somehow the neck is too tight it is supposed to be like um like a boat neck not loose but like a boat neck and it's more like a strangle neck somehow uh i I must have done my bind off too tight. I don't know. Um, the armholes are a bit, are a bit snug. They like, they fit me literally like a sleeveless, which I know that the intention was to have a really boxy body and then like a, a tighter sleeve. 
to like offset you know to help balance it out I get that but it's like I literally like don't even need sleeves it's just like it could just be like a, a, a sleeveless top and if I liked it better maybe it would be but the the thing that bugs me the most 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 which is why I'm ripping it out is because and I've heard people say this but I did not believe it about myself I did not realize how different my gauge was between knitting in the round and knitting back and forth and it's like horrendously different so um I'm not giving anything away I know people have talked about this pattern a lot but it's worked um it, the body is worked inside out in just um knitting in the round and then once you get past the sleeves and split then you you start to work back and forth and like what the what I mean you can literally I mean you could literally see it it looks like a totally different pattern I mean it, it might as well be it's ridiculous what what was what was happening here Sarah what's what is that it's trash is what it is my trash not Andrea's trash obviously oh my god I would never talk bad about her her stuff is oh man she's um she's amazing anyway I have no idea I, I don't have the patience to fix it so it's getting frogged and I I'll I'll use the I'll use the yarn for something else it's 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 it it was devastating but I feel good about my decision it has to happen that's that that's that um um next up Eos uh so as soon as that was done and uh I cried and had my little t temper tantrum I cast on um a summer a summer knit project because I just needed a pick me up so uh I talked about this last week um but I'm using the Kubu Kobu I don't know Kobu yarn olive color 51% cotton 49% rayon from bamboo and I'm doing the opal tank by two of wands um so this is it so far. Uh, this is the front body. You work it bottom up. So here's my bottom and here's my up. Uh, so you just keep doing this for obviously like a while. Uh, so it's very easy, very, very mindless so far until I have to split for sleeves. It's a very uh, open armed. That's not the right word. Loose arm. I'm going to put a picture. So I don't have to try to, yeah. Uh, and then I think it's Razorback. I can't quite remember that part. It might be Razorback. But it's just a loose, loose little guy. Loose little knit. Uh, so hopefully that'll, hopefully that'll work up quick. I just started this, um, I'm not, well, I don't, I don't know when I started it. It's on my Ravelry if you care that much. But, um, so I have that going. I only have two things that I'm, I'm like really working on right now. I have that. And then I have my uh, April Sock Squad from Farmer's Daughter Fibers. And I'm doing another Summerly Knits pattern. I like it. Um, I have never done cables before. I've only done, like, fake cables. So I was very... Uh, oh, come on, get in there. There we go. I was, I was really scared. <laughs> Uh, cause I've never, I've never read a cable pattern. So I honestly thought that, uh, cable patterns were like cabling every single round. They're not. Um, so anyway, so I'm just doing this with the two, um, colorways. The, the screen is the mini skein and then, and then this is, I don't know. It's fun. I'm glad that you can see the pattern so much with whenever yarn is, um, like a, a lot of colors. I worry about the texture showing up, um, but I, I don't know. I also didn't want to knit just plain van vanilla socks, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I had mentioned in my first video that with every color, with every month I'm trying to do a new pattern of socks. So this is my Summerly Knits. I don't remember the name, so I will, you know, it'll be, it probably already was up on the screen. Um, so I have half of the first sock done. I'm doing the heel turn now. So uh, I still have a couple more days left, two weeks-ish, left in the month to get that done. I'm trying super, super hard, and I have been successful thus far of knitting uh, that month's colorway, getting it done in that month, uh, mostly because I don't want to get behind, and also because I think at the end of the year, there is maybe like a, a prize, 
uh, or you know the potential for a prize if you knit if you keep up with every month so that's exciting I think I really like the pattern that's my second summer Lee knit pattern and I I love I love her patterns I love the way they're written she includes written instructions and charts so either whatever preference you have it is there for you um it's great I can't say enough good things and I know like last time I was like oh yeah I recommend all of her patterns based on this one and then afterwards I was like am I allowed to even say that and then uh I don't know I don't know what's allowed and what's not I don't know. but second pattern and I still gave it two thumbs up so uh Summer Lee is a winner in my book okay now for the biggest discussion So every time I buy yarn, hold on, let me back up. Last time I talked about my ridiculous stash of yarn, and I, I don't mean that dramatically. I don't mean that as like, oh my gosh, look at me. I mean, like, it, it's ridiculous. 90% of my yarn is, um, well, A, like I said before, I have been, I've been yarning, crocheting, whatever, for a very long time. So, and some of this yarn dates back, I mean, like, literally, like, a decade plus ago it was purchased. So this is not by any means, like, you know, all bought in a year or whatever. But as I was going through it, and I said I was adding all my stash to Ravelry, which I have stopped doing because that's, that was a terrible idea. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is just as I, as I buy yarn and have an intended purpose for it, uh, I will add it to my stash on Ravelry because that was like, I, I have no idea what I was thinking with that. Anyway, um, so the majority of my stash has, has no purpose and it's not even usually like a quantity enough to make a garment or, or whatever, or it's not appropriate for socks things like that. A lot of it's Red Heart Super Saver, Bernat, Value, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with using those yarns at all. It's just not my choice of yarn right right now. So, um, so I have a ton of that kind of yarn that is just kind of sitting, and I'm, I'm thinking really hard about keeping it because there will eventually be a, a, a use for it, um, or I, I've, I'll probably just donate it to get it uh, like out of my space. Um, I'm trying, as I said last video, this is my year that I'm trying to really organize my space and just have it, have it be good and feel good because this is, it's, it's, it's a lot of stuff. So, um, what was my point? Oh, so all the yarn I'm buying now, and since I've really gotten into knitting like October-ish of 2022, all has a purpose. Like I'm buying it, knowing what I'm making it for, for, you know, for the most part, um, much more so than, than how I used to buy yarn. So I say every time I buy yarn that I'm done, I'm good. I literally have more projects than I have time to, to knit in, in reality. Um, but you know, then these, you watch these podcasts on YouTube and they're talking about all these great patterns that they're going to start working on. Or you're scrolling through Instagram and there's like a million amazing creators out there who have new patterns. And then you're like stuck because you want to do all of it. So I thought I was done buying yarn. Then I bought more yarn. And what I really wanted to be good about was when I bought yarn, adding the, that intended pattern to my queue and then putting in the little note section. Uh, and I'm talking Ravelry. So if you don't use Ravelry, I'm sorry, but I think, I think the majority of people do. So in the note section, when I add it to the queue, I'm, I'm putting in the yarn that I bought for it, right? Because there's like days between when you buy the yarn and then it gets shipped and delivered and all these things. So I was super excited when my big old box right here of knit picks came in, sorting through it all, looking at my patterns, getting all excited for spring and summer knits. And I didn't add any of the yarn <laughs> to the notes. And I don't remember 
what I bought what for. And I know that that's really sad, but I also know that I'm not alone and I'm not the only person to have done that. So I'm going to go over the yarn that I bought with what I think I bought it for. And then I want to talk about a couple other patterns that now I'm super confused about because I had all of my stuff laid out, ready to go. And then I keep watching the videos and seeing, <laughs> seeing new patterns. So I'm going to have to have like a really stern talk with myself and get it together. <sighs> okay. Yes. Okay. So let's just, let's just jump right into it. So this, uh, hilariously is not, um, it's a winter knit, whatever. Um, I just got some more wool of the Andes. This is marble heather. And then this is, um, dove heather. I bought these to, um, I picked up a few of Tiffany Lynn's patterns when she had a sale a couple weeks ago. And this is for her gray space pattern. Um, again, just as a reminder, I'm not super, super great at swaying from the original colors used in a pattern. Hopefully that'll change once I make the pattern and see how the garment turns out. Um, the, this sweater calls for two colors and you could literally, I mean, you could go bananas with your color choices. Uh, I just, I, I don't have like the creative bananas part to be able to do that very well. So, um, so I'm doing the gray space. Plus I just, I, I like gray and neutrally colored things. So that's on the docket. That's in my queue. I don't, I don't know if that'll necessarily be made now, especially since we're going to spring and summer and I'm about to talk about like 17 other projects that I want to make. So we'll see where that goes. Um, this is the stroll tonal colorway eucalyptus. Um, this is all by nitpicks, by the way. Uh, or from Knit Picks. I really like them. I think they have a great variety. And um, I had a skein left over from another project that I accidentally overbought for. So I picked up two more of these. And with this, I want to make the close, nope, Cozy Classic Light by Jessie Maid. I'm obsessed with her patterns. I've never once made one. So I'm super excited about this. It's just a really light, literally a lightweight raglan. This is fingering weight yarn. Um, I think it'll just be so nice and great for spring, summer, fall. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So that's on, that's on the docket. And again, I don't have an order. They're ordered in my queue on Ravelry, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, that doesn't mean anything to me. Um, next I bought some Lindy chain in the color rouge. People talk about this yarn a lot. It's, it's chain, obviously it's chain yarn. So, um, I, wanted to buy this. I was excited to, to try it and to knit with it. I, I don't know. We'll see what it's like. But with this, I think I want to do the outline tee by Jessie Mabe. Um, I am not very adventurous when it comes to my clothing. Um, like crop tops are a no for me. I just, I don't, I don't know. I guess like, I don't know why. I'm sure it's some deep seated, issue as to why I don't dress bold but I'd like to try to start um being a little brighter with my wardrobe so I liked this and then I liked just the details of the outline tank it just has like drop stitches like going down here and and uh down here so um I thought that would be nice for for spring summer next up is um Jacqueline Sis Sea Slack Sis Slack Sea Slack I'm sorry. I know she's like so super popular and I should know how to say her name. Um, but I'm going to make her rift. It's just, a, it's just a nice tee, oversized tee. Hers is pretty cropped. I'll probably make mine a little bit lower because again, it's just like a comfort thing for me. Um, I just bought Simply Cotton uh, Bear in a sport weight for that. Why? Come on. There we go. Nope. Ah, there it is. Uh, it's just a bear on dyed yarn. Um, I really would like some more neutrals like this, uh, like beiges, whites, creams. I have always strayed away from it because, um, I have kids and obviously they were young for like a really long time and life was messy. Um, but I think I'm, I think they're old enough and I think I am adult enough now to handle some 
risky light colors. So I'm super excited about that one. Um, speaking of lighter, nice neutrals, I bought this Cot Lin DK Weight in the colorway Linen. Oh, you get it. It's a nice little like uh, beigey color. And this, I believe I'm going to make the Feldspar Tea by Hannah from uh, Herb Garden, Herb Garden Knits. So I'm excited for that. Um, and then the issue with not putting notes in is I have, I bought a yarn and I, I don't know what it's for. Uh, it's the Snuggle Puff. And it's in the color way Neptune. And it's like, I mean, it's like a really, really gorgeous navy. And it's super, it's super soft and fluffy. It's in, it's an Aran weight yarn. And I, I have nothing in my queue that is that weight yarn. So I legit am so, I'm so frustrated with myself. I don't know what this is for. But I have... A quantity for something um so it'll come to me it'll just go up on my yarn wall and and wait wait to be used but I am really excited to use it because it's like oh it's really soft that's gonna be nice in something so that's a bummer I don't know what it's for a uh, couple other things I bought I just I've never tried knit pits knit picks of uh, Felici fingering sock yarn fingering weight sock yarn so I just bought these little guys I think that they were on sale when I was buying everything else so I picked them up um this is yipes stripes and this one is olive juice uh I have said it before I will say it a hundred more times I am a sucker for self-striping yarn and for sock yarn so when it's together I'm getting it I love I love handmade socks um so much they are my favorite thing to make as of right now again I have not made very many other like garments or things like that so um but I love them I wear my handmade my hand knit socks all the time um so I don't mind just keeping that in stash without like an actual intended project because I don't know I don't know because I love it um oh and then lastly I bought this yarn for a different project and I started the project and I hate the project I shouldn't say hate really didn't like the way this yarn worked in the project it is Bernat uh, simply soft softy whatever baby cotton it's uh, like 60% cotton 40% acrylic um, I didn't like I just didn't like the the look of it you know what I mean so I'm gonna rip that out and I now have a big old quantity of this so I will either return it I'm, I won't return it. Um, but so I have this for something and it's a, I think it's a weight three. Yeah. So that'll be good for something for a summer too. So maybe I will use this. I have a lot more summer intentions. So, and look at that. It's like a, it's like a nice light neutral. They call it feather gray. I mean, the, my lighting's not great here and it does have like a, can you see clear? I don't know. It does have like a gray undertone. Anyway, it's a, it's a really nice light neutral. And because it's mostly cotton, I think I can get away with using it for, for something. So that's what, I think that's everything. So that's what I um, intend to make. But then I want to talk about my decision troubles. Because hmm, I also bought a few of Samantha Guerin's, Guerin, Guerin's patterns um and she has she just released the petal party crop and it's like so cute <laughs> um it's really cute so I bought that and I bought another one of her um patterns I think salty something tea salty I don't remember but I really want to make this petal party crop top so very bad um that's all I have to say about it it's beautiful and I'm obviously I put a picture up already it's fantastic super excited I've never made any of her patterns before 
I, I want to get on that too. Um, and then I also bought Rebecca Clow, 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 just released her um, Corin cardigan. Another amazing cardigan. Oh, I wonder if I could use that. Um, I am really into it. It's just like, it looks lightweight. It looks airy. It looks like a really fun, interesting pattern to keep you, you busy. Uh, I think I want to make like a short sleeve for spring, summer, but I'll see when I actually get it started because it might end up being long sleeve to go into fall, winter. But I did just buy that the when she released it. She offered um, a very generous little discount. So I picked that up. Um, other other issues meaning like patterns I really want to get going on um two are from Petite Knit the Rigmore tee which is like literally adorable a freaking adorable and the um Friday tee because who doesn't love stripes I don't know anybody that doesn't love stripes so those are two short sleeve tees that I would like to do there is an Ingrid top by Gregoria Fibers that is just so cute. It's like just a sleeveless. It has these cute little eyelet details all, all around. Uh, it's adorable. Um, and I really like that. Another tee. Nope. Tank. Nope. Top. Sleeveless. Top. The retro button top. It is sleeveless. And it has cute little buttons. And it's super cute. And it's super basic. And you could jazz it up or you could not. And it looks really amazing. And I want to do that. Um, sorry, that's by Witchery Design. I forgot to say that. And then lastly, the Palme T Solo by, uh, I don't know her name, Lene Holme Sams. Nope. I'm going to really mess that up. Um, but it was published on, uh, Lynette's website and I will post her name also because that was bad of me and um but just all super cute like spring summer knits and it's like how how do you how do you decide I cannot make 20 garments in a season in a year I can't do that I mean in probably in two years I can't do that so I'm having a really hard time I'm having a really hard time figuring it out. I'm not going to lie. And it's stressing me out because I want to just get things on the needles, which I shouldn't because I, I, I'm working on the opal tank and it would be nice if I didn't have so many whips going so that my projects could get done more timely. So maybe I will stick with that. It's just so hard when I buy the yarn and it comes and I just really want to start. <laughs> I really want to start. So um, those are all of my potential projects, all the yarn I got. The very last thing that I want to show is um, I don't, I, I very much lean into being inspired by what other people are doing. I said this on the last video and that's, that's just, that's how I get my like knitting creative mojo going is is by what other people have going on too and uh, it seems like everybody spins yarn now so for some reason I thought I should too um I did not I just I not just I bought a hand spindle because um Whilst I normally go a million percent into things in terms of like buying everything and all that, that is something I'm trying to work on as well. So I bought just a hand spindle to see what I thought about it. And then I bought a little bit of unspun wool. So there is, um, I grabbed a, a, like a starter kit basically by Fiber Fate on Etsy. She puts together a spindle instructions and then she where is it? Uh, she puts together, you can pick um, four, four, four ounce uh, wool bits to, uh, to order. And what's really, really nice is they're all different kinds of wools or sheep, whatever you want to say. So, um, so you get the, you know, you get the experience of like trying different, um, 
archives is what I'm trying to say. Sorry, I'm having trouble like word finding today, apparently. So this is the pack I picked. And the um, these three are undyed. And they're like, they're just, they're just really pretty. Can you see? Yes, there you can see. And then this last one, I bought the, I bought this specific kit just because of this one. Cause like, hello, who are you? It's like, I wish my lighting was better. I'm sorry. But it's, it's so, it's, it's so beautiful. And I know I just got done saying that I'm like very neutral and things, but, but I also said I'm trying to get out of that. So I, I got that. And then of course, I don't, I guess I did go a little bit heavy on, on this because I loved that one so much that I bought, I thought, I thought if spinning goes well, I will definitely want more of that green. So instead of waiting, because I, you know, I don't know, I don't know how much, how quickly dyed on unspun wool goes. So I bought um, this much more. Uh, I can't, I don't remember how much it is, but it's a lot. It's, it's, it's enough to, it, it's the same thing. It's enough to make a quantity enough for a garment. I did all the like Google math stuff. So I bought that and then I did buy, oh golly, I, I, I did buy one other big bundle because, um, this one is from walnut farm designs i bought some things from them before so they're like a favorited favorited shop of mine on etsy so of course you know etsy sends you notifications when your shops like add more stuff so this is what even got me started uh not what got me started what got me hooked on the fact that i needed to buy a hand spindle and wool because i mean I, again, I wish my lighting was better. The purples in this, it's just, it's just so pretty. And it's so uh, amazing to me that people do this and put this together. So it's got oranges and pinks and grays and purples and it's, it's beautiful. And it was really actually hard to pick um, from her yarns because she, she had, they have so, so many amazing colorways. I, I could have spent a lot of money, but yay me, I didn't. I just bought this one from her. Again, Walnut Farm Designs. I will, I will of course link everything uh, below. So I don't um, have, I don't have any intentions of starting spinning anytime soon. I don't know how to necessarily work that into my my time um so it might very well just sit for a little bit but I'm just still really really excited to have it on hand and ready to go and um I think that that's it um just to acknowledge a couple of things I understand my hair is a mess um I don't on I don't understand I don't know curly hair I, I really don't uh, I don't know what to do with it, what to use with it. I don't even know what kind of curly I have because every time I take those like quizzes online, it, um, like always directs me to like buy something before they'll tell me. And I, ugh, ugh. so, um, if anybody with curly hair that looks, that looks like mine, um, is watching and you want to let me know what you use, that'd be cool. I currently use, um, a brand called Curl Smith. And I just have their like everything shampoo conditioner um air dry cream and then this like spray to help revitalize your curls on like non-washing days I also had one of those situations today where like I looked in the bathroom mirror and thought I looked better than how I'm looking on camera I uh, you know how that happens like different lighting different whatevering so there's that uh, other thing I want to acknowledge is this like the the mess of my my room that I record in I know that to do a proper video you're supposed to have like an aesthetically pleasing background and a nice clean lit area um I don't have that I guess I 
yeah, I don't, my life is not aesthetically pleasing. So I have no space in my home that is either. Um, it's just easiest for me to record down here because all of my projects and stuff live down here. So I know I talked about my yarn wall um, last episode. I'm just gonna take you on a mini tour. I'm not gonna move the camera, but so if you wanna like X out now, thanks for hanging out, I get it. Um, but so that's just a pegboard with hooks that I have all of my yarn on. And these all yarn up here right now has intended projects. Like I don't have all that stash I was talking about up there because it just became way too cluttered and you couldn't see anything properly. And then over here are these, you see these like blue lines. Those are really cool little, um, they're just little jars that are, are four pegboards. They go in and then you screw it from the bottom and you can, um, keep stuff in them. So it has like all my notions and things. Um, my blocking pins, my barber, or, yeah, barber cords, um, progress keepers, all that kind of stuff. It just houses all that kind of thing. And then um, over here is a load of fabric. Um, there's also a load of fabric. You can kind of see it here. And then going down, I have a, um, a bar with hooks that I have fabric clips you, which in hindsight is probably not the best way to store fabric and that might be changing, but that's a long story. Um, so this is all baby fabric. Um, I was really into sewing uh, flannel burp cloths and muslin blankets about um, maybe th three, well, th two or three years ago now. Um, I was really gung-ho about, I still like to sew, don't get me wrong, but I was really gung-ho about getting some baby items made and starting an Etsy shop and sewing things for baby, things for home. Like I, I had, I have sewn some cotton, you know, printed napkins, like reusable napkins and things. And I wanted to do all that. And it, some stuff got sewn for sure. I do have like a, quite a bit of things that, that can get listed, but uh, the Etsy shop never got opened because I didn't finish that pile of stuff. I wanted to really have like a good assortment for people to choose from. And instead of just getting going what I had, nothing got going. And now it's all just sitting in here serving zero purpose. Um, so that's a bummer. Uh, I would really love to get back to it. And I'd love to get some knit things for sale too, uh, eventually. But right now I'm focused on knitting for, for me and for my family and for a few select friends that I have some projects um, in mind for. And then hopefully after that, um, yeah, I'll get, I really like getting things made and out into the world. I, I had an Etsy shop before when I crocheted a lot and I just made like some really cute little girl purses and I don't know, just like some various things. And it's just so, uh, such a wonderful feeling to have somebody want to, to purchase things that you've made. And then to, to know that that's like getting out there in the world and bringing joy to somebody else. It's a really fulfilling feeling and I would love to get back there again. I just, um, 2021 up to currently there has, has been a lot of life stuff that has gotten in the way. Um, so working through all that and, uh, we'll be back to it and hopefully open an Etsy shop maybe next year or maybe by the end of this year, who knows? But yeah, that's a long-term, long-term goal for sure. That is enough rambling, I believe. Uh, I appreciate if you have stuck around this long. Again, thank you if you've watched my first video, if you have watched this. Uh, it really means the world to me. Um, and I thank you. And I hope that you have an amazing day. And we will chat again soon.